Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about an expensive repair that you may encounter if you have an i8 that's outside of warranty or you're thinking about buying one. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more i8 content. If you have an i8 that's out of warranty or you're thinking about buying one that's out of warranty, you can encounter a couple expensive repairs. Today I'm going to talk about the air conditioning compressor issue that I recently learned about that may cost a lot of money and potentially devalue this car. It's only fitting that I do a uniform change right now. This is from Normal Guy Supercar. He's a Ferrari expert, DIY guy, YouTuber. Check him out, link in the description. When he shared information about his Ferrari, the Ferrari community went up in arms saying that he was devaluing the car and they were not happy when he released information about the potential costs that an owner may encounter. Well, today I'm going to end up making the same video for the BMW i8. And yes, it was a dilemma for me to come to terms with whether or not I was going to release this information. You see, back in the spring, I received a couple messages, either through Facebook or through Instagram, and they said, Pat, what is this noise that I'm hearing? Or, Pat, I had to take my car in because the air conditioning was throwing a fault and it's costing me thousands of dollars to repair it. Now the car is off. So yeah, these are pretty bad problems that you can encounter with this car with the air conditioning compressor. And when I posted about it on the i8 forums, many people came back and said, is there a fix for this? Is there a new compressor that doesn't have this problem? And I said, not that I've heard of. In fact, many people who've had it replaced asked their mechanic, what's going on with this? Um, can I actually get a newer part that's going to have better longevity and this problem will go away? The dealers are saying no. The i8 uses an air conditioning compressor in order to not only cool the cabin, but to also cool the high voltage battery. You see, when you charge or discharge the high voltage battery, the way it stays cool is a refrigerant manifold that runs through the battery pack. And that refrigerant manifold does a good job at maintaining good temperature in that battery pack, but it requires an additional amount of refrigerant over what you would normally have in another vehicle. It probably requires higher pressures. It requires a valve to allow the refrigerant to flow through the battery pack. And it does use a compressor, which is electronic. So there's a three phase alternating current motor that powers this air conditioning compressor and it sits up front here in the i8. Now in a normal automotive application, a belt driven compressor will have a set of pistons that will be driven by a plate that's constantly moving them. In the i8, it uses a scroll type compressor. These are typically more efficient. You'll see these in your HVAC in your house or even a refrigerator. But in the i8, the scroll type compressor, I believe, because of the heat that's being generated by the compressor, and the amount of pressure that needs to come off of the compressor results in that scroll deteriorating. When it deteriorates, it starts to send metal through the refrigerant lines. 
And those refrigerant lines not only run up to the condenser and into the evaporator, which would be used to normally cool the cabin, but also into the high voltage battery compartment. Those manifolds that are in there will carry that metal through them. And when you actually have a problem, when you're starting to hear noise from your air conditioning compressor, and you go to take it in to have it repaired, part of the process is for them to look for swarf or metal fragments. And when they notice that, they do have a procedure in the manual in order to clear that out. It's a rinsing procedure where they can remove the condenser on the front of the car and then hook up some type of equipment, which will then force some type of fluid through the system in order to try to get that swarf out of there. However, if that's not effective, they need to replace refrigerant lines. In order to replace the refrigerant lines that are inside the high voltage battery enclosure, they have to, of course, drain the refrigerant from the system. They have to drain the coolant because the coolant lines run underneath the high voltage battery enclosure. They have to remove the electronic connection to the battery enclosure. And then they have to set up a rig on top of a table in order to support that battery. So you'd put the car on a lift, you'd lower it to a certain point, you'd set up the table in the rig, you'd go ahead and lower the car down, and then you'd unbolt the enclosure for the entire high voltage battery, and then you'd lift the car while the battery stayed below. And then you would open the compartment to the battery enclosure, and then you'd start pulling battery packs out, and then eventually you would get down to the actual manifolds. And the manifolds can then be replaced. But this process takes a lot of time. So if you consider an air conditioning compressor right now costs about $1,300 or $1,400 as of this recording. And then the labor that goes into just replacing that air conditioning compressor can be about $3,000. So you can be quoted under $5,000 just to replace the air conditioning compressor. That's a lot of money. But if they have to go through the process of dropping the high voltage battery enclosure, you're looking at a bill that could be upwards of $17,000. In fact, someone actually told me, here's a copy of my receipt. See, this is what they were quoting me in order to replace everything because there was metal in the lines. So it led me to the point where I wanted to let you know that this is a major problem. And it's not only in the i8, it's in the i3. When I talked to the foreman at my local dealership, he said he had just done this type of work in an i3. It's very labor intensive and it's a pain. So what's gonna happen when your air conditioning compressor goes out on your i8? If it's covered under warranty, you're good to go. And be sure to check out your warranty pamphlet in your car because certain cars that are registered in certain states actually have the ability to have the air conditioning compressor replaced under California emissions. So definitely check out the warranty guide for your car. However, be warned if you own this car outside of warranty and the air conditioning compressor starts to make noise, you might want to have it replaced sooner than later. Otherwise, you may be stuck with a bill of $18,000. Nobody wants that. So I posted this information on the i8 forums and a lot of folks came back and said, what do I got to do to prevent this problem? Well, there's nothing. When this starts to fail, it can get costly. Which brings up the next question. Should you replace it ahead of time? Should the air conditioning compressor be part of a you know, routine maintenance thing where four years goes by, let's say, because we're seeing 2014 and 2015 air conditioning compressors start to fail here in the year 2020. You know, should you have the air conditioning compressor replaced after four years? It could be preventive maintenance. It could save you from a problem, but you're gonna have to pay out of pocket. That can be very expensive. If you're like me, you have a warranty with the car. So this is still covered under certified pre-owned and I did recently extend it. Link in the description for that video. And I started to have noise in my air conditioning compressor. So what I did is I went over to the right side of the car, the right front. I had just driven the car in e-drive, electronic drive, for about five minutes. That heated up the batteries enough that the air conditioning would actually start to flow through the high voltage battery. And it was only then that I heard the sound. 
So I decided to take the car in and they said, well, we can't recreate this. We can't replicate it. Could you come in? I said, sure. And I went and drove the car for about five miles and came back and uh, the foreman came out. He said, yeah, it's making the sound. Let's pop the hood. So we did that. And he got the stethoscope out and put it on the air conditioning compressor and said, yep, that's what's making the noise. And it was actually shaking a little bit. Then he put a ticket in the system and the company that underwrites the CPO warranty was contacted and they said, well, I don't really see a problem yet. The air conditioning's working. Yeah, it's a little noisy, but you know, we're not going to go ahead and cover a replacement just yet, which is fine. Take the car home. I'll drive it some more. I'm just going to continue driving it until it starts to sound even worse. Kind of like the clip that somebody had sent me when they first reached out and said, what's going on with my car? So if you have this noise in your BMW i8, you definitely want to get it checked out. And I did take some time to look on the web to see if there was any revised part number for the i8 air conditioning compressor. There are lots of them. So I don't know what happened over this period of time. Did the air conditioning compressor have a problem and they redesigned it? Did they source it from another manufacturer? Did the manufacturer decide to build it differently? I don't know. All we know is, this is a problem that comes up in the i8, it's very expensive, the part is expensive, and it doesn't look like the part's been revised. And I even went so far in order to reach out to BMW USA and say, hey, these are the issues that are going on right now, I'm reading about it, I want to release a video about it, could you please talk to somebody in management, give me some kind of assurance that this is, problem is not going to come up again? And they said, well, if you have any questions, we're going to refer you directly to your dealer. So nobody from BMW USA actually communicated with me or opened a dialogue with me to talk about this issue. So I'm getting nowhere there. So at this point, I think this is a risky situation for folks who own the i8 or want to buy one. You need to be aware of this potential issue and you need to make sure you have a lot of money on hand in case you need to repair it. And when it breaks again in four years, you're going to need more money in order to repair it. So, sorry folks, but I'm devaluing the i8 today. So I hope I've done a good job of being able to inform you about the potential issue that I see with the air conditioning system in the i8. So if you appreciate this information, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more BMW i8 content and maybe even devaluing the car a little more. <laughs> Thanks for watching and happy motoring.